Hi, this is Scott with 4D Tech. Today we are in a 1617 body style Ford Mustang that came SYNC 3 equipped but lacks navigation. We will be installing the 4D Tech navigation upgrade kit for SYNC 3 in this vehicle. In order to perform this upgrade, we need a few basic tools. Phillips and flathead screwdriver, seven millimeter nut driver, and plastic dash removal tools. The dash removal tools and seven millimeter nut driver are available on our website for your convenience. Let's get started. First, we need to remove this piece of trim that runs all along the top side of the dash and along the top side of the screen. To do so, we need to start at this edge and remove this piece of trim. We'll do this with one of our dash tools and use the dash tool to help the clips and pull it off. Next, we wanna swing down this small piece of plastic underneath the dash here because it overlaps this. And you can just swing that down and leave it hanging for now. It'll just get clipped back in when we're done. Next, we need to unclip this whole piece of dash. It's all just plastic clips, but the clips are pretty tight on this vehicle. Some of them may be very hard to unclip, and some of them may pop off in the dash, and you'll just have to grab them and put them back on the panel. So we're going to start across the edge here. And it'll be pretty hard to start, but once you get it started, you can use your hands to work your way across and just gently pull out. As I said, the clips are pretty tight, but it will unclip. And then if you have these gauges up here, there's a connector on the back. You push in on the little tab on the bottom side of the connector and unplug it. And we'll move this out of the way. Now we need to remove the top portion of this center console so we can slide it back and get to fasteners that are up here underneath the edge of the dash. <clears throat> First, we pull the sides off of the console. They are just clipped on. This driver's side has the same panel. It's a mirror image. Next, there's two seven millimeter screws on each side that need to come out. With those four screws out, we're gonna lift up the cover for the back of the center console. And this has to get unsnapped starting back here and working our way forward. Get our clip started at the back here. With it all unclipped like that, there's two more clips here facing forward, and you'll just want to pull back on the console to unclip those. It's easier at this point if we just turn on the ignition 
and slide the shifter back. And then you can shut the ignition off. And now we can slide it back a little bit further to gain a little bit more access. Now we take this rubber tray out of the front tray here <clears throat> and there's two seven millimeter screws pointing down that need to come out of this tray. With the screws out, just work the tray out. <clears throat> and there's a little cover plate in between the connectors here. Mine says shaker because this has the shaker audio system in it. Yours may be blank. And just hook your fingers underneath it and unsnap it and move that out of the way also. With the center console pulled back and out of the way and the cover panel removed, next we need to take out these four seven millimeter screws holding the front control panel bezel in. With the four screws out, we just need to remove this panel. The easiest way is to put your fingers underneath the front corners here and pull out. Lift the bottom edge out to clear the bottom. And lay the panel flat to have it out of the way so we can get to the screen. Next, we need to take the four seven millimeter screws out that hold the screen in place. With the four screws removed, we just pull the screen outward and we need to disconnect it. There are three things that need to be disconnected, the GPS antenna, USB connector, and the main connector. There's a little tab on the back side here, on the bottom edge of the GPS connector that you squeeze. And if we put our flat blade screwdriver just underneath the blue part of the connector, we can push the connector off. It's the easiest way to disconnect it. The USB connector, you squeeze this clip on the back edge of it, on the top with, with your thumb, and unplug. And then the main connector here uses this gray lock. And what you do is there's a little safety here on the gray lock. You push that in with your fingertip, swing the gray lock down, and then pull the connector out. Now that we have the screen with the APIM removed, we are going to be replacing this APIM with the navigation equipped one from 4D Tech. The best thing to do is to set this down on a table on top of a piece of foam that came in the box with it. Uh, for the sake of this video, I'm going to set a cloth in the opening so that you can see what I'm doing. First, we need to disconnect this blue screen cable, the blue connector side of it. So we push down the little tab. We'll push down the little tab and pull out. You may need the help of your flat blade screwdriver just in between this edge here. And unplug it and swing it out of the way. Now we'll take our Phillips screwdriver and remove the three Phillips screws holding the APIM to the screen. With the three screws off, we'll remove the APIM and put the new one from 4D Tech in the place of it that's navigation equipped. We'll just replace the three screws that we just took out.
With the three screws back in, we'll just reconnect the screen connector, carefully push it in until it clicks. Pull our cloth out of the way as we no longer need it. And now we just need to install the screen with the new APIM on it. To reconnect the main connector, you want to make sure that this is fully seated in order for it to work right. So with the lever still pulled all the way towards you, push the connector in until the lever starts to move and then push the lever up into place till it locks. The black USB connector plugs into the black connector on the brain. The gr light gray one is unused. The GPS connector, the little clip on the bottom side of it, that points down when you reconnect it. Now we'll put the screen back in place and replace the four screws we took out earlier. Now that we have the four screws back in, we'll replace our front control panel. clip that back into place and then put the four screws back in that we took out earlier. Next we need to reassemble the console portion here. So we're gonna, we're gonna put our cover plate back over our screws. Work the tray back into place here. It should just set in, in the screw holes line up. And we'll replace these two seven millimeter screws. We'll set our tray liner back in, take the console, slide it back forward, and we'll push forward till it snaps in. And then just push down and it all clips back in. Now we'll replace the two screws on each side of the console. And then we just need to put our side covers back on as well. Next, we'll need to put this piece of dash back on up here that we took off earlier. We need to plug this connector back in with the tab facing down to plug the gauges back in. Get the panel in place and just snap it back on. It goes back on much easier than it comes off. Then we'll take this small panel and snap it back into place. And this end panel will be snapped back into place as well. And now that we have the vehicle back together, We'll boot up the new SYNC 3 system from 4D Tech. 
It may take a few moments to boot the first time you hook it up. And now that we're booted up, you can see that we have a navigation icon. And we have our maps as well. Now you see how easy it is to upgrade your SYNC 3 system to navigation in your 1617 Ford Mustang. I'm Scott with 4D Tech. Thank you for checking out our video.